Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. I hope you can all hear me and I hope you're on a fabulous day so far, whatever you're doing. Um, so welcome along then to this afternoon's session with Fiona Campbell, who is the controller of BBC Three. I'm very excited because personally, I love BBC Three. And I want to start by saying a massive thank you to our sponsors, the University of Worcester School of Arts, with whom this little session would not be possible. Uh, so let me introduce myself then. Uh, my name my name is Richie Anderson and I am broadcasting to you in like a sort of Joe Exotic Tiger King jacket, but I'm uh, not as out there as him, I can promise you that. So I work every morning on the BBC Radio 2 Breakfast Show. You can hear me every morning on Radio 2 and I'm also on the one show at the moment because they're short staff, so I'm quids in there. It's fabulous stuff. Uh, and as you can tell from my accent, I am from the Midlands. I'm a black country boy born and bred. I'm from Smethwick. I'm a massive Baggies fan. Uh, and I love doing these kind of events because it's fabulous. And I kind of think back to when I first wanted to get into television. If, if you can pick the brains uh, of some of the incredible people who've joined us this week uh, in these sessions, then it's just a wonderful thing. So the Career Fair started on Monday and it's been organised by the uh, Royal Television Society in the Midlands. And this is the biggest ever year, which is amazing with everything going on with COVID and stuff. Uh, it's just amazing that they've managed to get it all done. And I promise you that is the only time I'm going to say the C word. That's it. We don't mention it again. This is a C word free zone. So this is a four day event that's been brought together from people across broadcasting for six hours of live stream sessions, masterclasses and workshops every single day. And we need you talking about it on social media. We're not doing it for our health. We need you talking about it. Uh, so make sure you are using the hashtag uh, RTS Careers Fair, that's ash, uh, hashtag RTS Careers Fair, and you know, just say what you want, but we would prefer if you said how wonderful we were, and how great Fiona was, and everything, and how much of a laugh you've had, so that's RTS Careers Fair, uh, and if there are any like complaints about me, don't use the hashtag, because I want to get booked again next year, do you know what I mean? Uh, so I mentioned we are lucky enough to be joined by the lady in charge of Britain's best television brand, Fiona Campbell, the controller of BBC Three. Um, and don't forget, if you want to ask a question as well, I don't want it to just be me wanging on to Fiona, uh, then put your questions in the Q&A box, which you should be able to see at the bottom of your screen. So it's great that Fiona's here with us. Um, and again, a massive thank you to the University of Worcester School of Arts for sponsoring this event. Fiona Campbell is the person in charge of the whole channel. She's been in the job since last January. Before that, she was the digital director for BBC News. She's had an incredible career working on everything from BBC One's Watchdog with the iconic Anne Robinson, do the little wink, uh, all the way up to uh, Channel 4 News. Fiona, hello. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Hi, Richie. I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to have a chat, take a break from Zooms and have a chat with you guys. Oh, it's so nice to have you here. Now, when I say the controller, I'm always interested to hear what that is because it sounds like the type of role, if I worked for BBC Three and I was called to the controller's office, stuff's going down. So what does the controller do? Um, yeah, it's one of those job titles that's been around, I think, since channel linear channels have been around and they've never quite changed it. It is very weird. Basically, it means that so the channel has a annual budget and I am overall responsible for what we commission out of that budget. So editorially having a strategy for the channel and uh, ensuring that as we spend that money, you know, we're representative and reflective of everyone of the whole nation um, and that it's going to deliver the best value to the under 35 audience. I'm also responsible for the editorial output so I have to sign off things like all the bad language you spend a lot of time doing that as uh, so a lot of sign off responsibility and legal you sort of also the legal stuff ends up coming back at you as 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 sort of legal issues are going through so it's legal editorial budgetary strategic many things but what's the most exciting thing about your job in like the most perfect work day for Fiona Campbell what does that entail um, gosh, at the moment, obviously, life's very, very different. Um, I think <clears throat> at the moment, like literally in these weeks, at the moment, it's when people are sent to me. I, I'm always saying, oh, send me a little clip, send me a little clip. So people are out filming things and I'm stuck in my attic in Belfast. I live in Belfast. <laughs> and 
So in my attic, people like this morning, somebody sent me some rushes of a series we're shooting with Amir Khan and his family. And seeing those rushes, and that's going to be made by Chatterbox Media, and seeing those rushes just makes me go, ah, because it's going to be great, and they're really fun, and I can see it coming together. And that's when you think one of those dry conversations you can have at the beginning of all this then comes to life as a creative thing that's really exciting. That clip we just saw then, BBC Three has it all. We saw a bit of RuPaul in there, a bit of this country, a bit of Stacey Dooley. It, it really, there's no stone that is left unturned when it comes to BBC Three. What have you still got coming up to, that we can look forward to on the channel? Well, uh, we're about to launch again Rap Game Series 2. Uh, with Crepton Conan and DJ Target and that did um, really well for us um, in series one and really reached those sort of younger, less well-off male audience who are very busy people out there doing gaming and all sorts of things. So it, it was really great for us and it was really great to show sort of the creativity and expression that rappers have and this series is really good and the contributors are really good. Uh, so you are the controller yeah. of BBC Three, and I imagine that you didn't just walk into pret manger one day and the boss of the BBC was in there and say, hey, do you want to run BBC Three? So take us back to the beginning, Fiona. How did your career get up and running? Um, so I saw an ad in the newspaper. Gosh, those were the, when the ads were, jobs were put in the newspaper for a six-month contract as a researcher on, um, that was the money program, which is a business program on BBC Two. And I, I really didn't, have, did I have any experience? No, I didn't really have any experience. I, I'd, I had bizarrely done a bit of work experience in Rome in an Italian station, which oh, wow. that kind of amounted to nothing. But, um, and I applied for that job and to be honest, that was 1994 and there were 10 people interviewed for two jobs and there were two women out of the 10 people being interviewed. And, um, and one of the few women editors in BBC News and Current Affairs at the time interviewed me. Um, so I think that that was sort of a key thing. And then I was in on a six month contract, not really knowing what I was doing, but I think having worked, you know, I had done shitloads of summer jobs and Saturday, but I just knew it was all about hard work. So, you know, I had no problem driving around Britain endlessly because I, I had, I, you know, I had my driving license. So I just drove the length of the breadth of the country all the time. I did whatever was needed to get those films together as fast as possible. So the directors and the producers would go, oh God, yeah, let's, I want Fiona to be my researcher because basically she'll make my life easy. Um, and I think that's what got me in and threw into the next opportunities. So learn how to drive. If you can, learn how to drive. Really important. Now, when I said I was doing this with you today, people were getting in my DMs saying, get me a job on BBC Three. I'm not, I ain't got that power, hon. But what I can do is when I talk to <laughs> Fiona, I can ask what catches your eye when people are getting in touch with you, for, you know, trying to get their first job in the media, the first foot on the ladder. What are the do's and don'ts catching your eye? Um, I think you have to be have watched the content. It's amazing the number of people who don't really have watched the content. So you've got to be able to talk about what we make and what you like about it and how it works. Because that's, that's all what we're living and breathing 24-7. So you really need to be across all of that. Um, also, you need to have loads of ideas. It's amazing the number of emails I get where people haven't got any ideas attached, you know. I don't even know what your area of interest is. I don't know what you know what what you know that I don't know in terms of stories. You've got to have ideas, and you've got to have ideas all the time. Um, and then it's just people who have done bits of filming. You know, now you can film stuff on your phone. You can have your own Insta channel. You can you know upload that to Vimeo for me. You've got to show me a wee bit of something. Mm -hmm. um, to get to get us us interested, and some people do do that, and it's it's um, good on them. It's amazing, and like in in the Sheffield Documentary Festival in November, we'll have our next BBC Three pitch, and one of the films in that clip was Rebecca Southwood, who you know can sex offenders change, and that 
came through the shift. That's obviously her idea, a very personal story of her, of her. And that came through the chef field. So there's the opportunities for people literally to go on screen and get things made if they have a really original idea and they understand how it could be work for BBC Three. Because frankly, if something, if an idea can work on BBC One or BBC Two, it's not for BBC Three. We, mm. we, we try and have content that's very separate from those channels and Channel Four, to be honest, because that's the whole point of our channel. We're supposed to be very for you the 25 and under audience that is you know, way out of the UK, it's representative of the whole of England and the nations as well, which I think we can talk about more about as well. So a lot of the contributors in our competition shows, you'll notice they're from all over the UK. They're very clearly from different parts of the UK and um, that's very important for us. Mm. Now, one thing I know you're passionate about, Fiona, is new technology and uh, th you've used this throughout all of your careers. Can you talk us through how technology has shaped your work over the years? Yeah. Yeah, so as I said, I, pro I wasn't the most experienced researcher when I started. And um, and there lots of people who were way more experienced than me. And I remember thinking, oh, how am I going to, you know, get the next contract? How is this going to work? And then at that time, I figured that... Um, you know, at that time they brought out the VX2000, which was the first small camera that you could self shoot with. And it had radio mics. And I thought, Do you know what? I'm going to learn how to shoot that and be mm. able to, when I'm off running around the UK, I started off around the UK and then I started doing a lot of international shoots. But when I'm out, I'm, I can just bloody film the stuff myself. So I, I, I did a bit, I did like a two day course and then I just was off and just started doing it. And some other people were doing it with me at the same time. And some people were a bit afraid of it. And I just was like, there's no point being afraid of it. You just switch it on. We used to phone each other from location to location to say, the radio mics aren't working. What do you do? And I'd be like, you get out that little screwdriver, fiddle with the, da, da, da. and we, because there was no, you couldn't video call. You had to talk each other through. So I would just say, you know, and me learning how to shoot and do my own sound was totally key to then getting to make my first films getting made an AP, getting a job on Watchdog, which meant that I'd make short films literally every week, which then led to becoming an AP on Panorama, which then led to being one of the youngest at 28 producers on Panorama because I could shoot my whole 40 minute film and the, it cost them nothing because I could shoot and do my own sound. So, you know, there really is um, no excuse now for not getting yourself really technically up there. And that's what will give you an edge in terms of joining a team. So lots of people in BBC Three team are really good self-shooters um, and or there's some really amazing editing skills in-house as well that we have. Mm -hmm. and, and I keep on saying to them, that's what makes them all highly marketable uh, in the jobs market. So it's, it's really important. And even now you can teach yourself online, but you just gotta keep, keep doing it and, and, and have a go at it. So that when, if somebody says to you, well, if I send you out to film this, can you do it? You go, yes. You don't go, well, I can have a go and it might not be that great, but no, you need to say, yes, I can do that. <laughs> Did you have a career plan? Because it's so varied, isn't it? Watchdog, Panorama, it's so different. Was, was there actually a career plan at the start that's led you to BBC Three? Or have you just kind of gone with it and thought, oh, I like this, I'll do more of this, I'll do more of that, I don't want to do that? Yeah, it's a bit more just gone with what I fancied because BBC Three obviously didn't exist at the beginning. It was BBC Choice, I think, in the beginning, a di very small digital channel when they started Digital Channel. But uh, no, I didn't. I just, I knew I wanted to make films and have a job that where I had the power to be in the edit and make the film. And that's why I got to shooting. I wanted to shoot my own stuff because then I had the, the vision of the film in my head. Um, and, and, I, and I just went to places that were going to be open to letting me have that ability. So, for example, I went to Watchdog and made films about broken washing machines and people <laughs> having shit holiday, shit package holidays. And I mean, people could go, I'm not bloody making films like that. And actually, that was probably the most creative, fun time of my whole career, because you could be super creative making films about shit holidays and about, I did Weekend Holiday Rescue where we used to fly out and rescue people from their shit holiday. And it was the most fun ever. <laughs> so I would, I would just say the other thing is don't be snooty. You know, if you get offered a job and you end up making films about broken washing machines, that's great because it really matters to people. And you've got to 
you've just got to be open about be you know people that are like want to make auteur films but i actually think you want to make films that people are going to really watch and engage with and it might be about washing machines it might be about holidays that's fine um and then the other thing about having jumped around a lot is you just get to know shit loads of people and that means as the years go on you know who you can call about things who you can ask for advice from um, so that breadth is really helpful all these years down down the line. Mm. What I love about uh, BBC Three, and I know you're passionate about it, and it's probably because you're from Belfast, I'm from the Midlands, is that we see a lot of things on BBC Three that are not in London. Now, mm. I live in London, and it's great, but Birmingham is always home for me, and I like to make films myself that are not in London and I was, I, I've had people before going hey, can we just film in Watford or can we just film in Reading I'm like no babe there's like there is life outside of the M25 so why is it important for you to tell the stories of people all around the country and do, would you agree that some people in TV don't get it uh god it's for me it's really important um in that it's kind of like the life you know I, I hadn't set foot in England or left I hadn't been outside of Belfast in the United Kingdom until I was over 18, you know. <laughs> so some people, London is just not relevant to them and never will be relevant to them. And, you know, I, I do bang on about there's been like research done about how um, the mobility of younger people is it's increasingly towards their hometown or the satellite town of where they were born. It's not down south. And this was way before the whole situation we're in now. And I just think the locality and where you're from and keeping to be near your family and all the people who'll help you through the hard times is really important. And also now, because we don't have to be in an office anymore, I think it's great because it means that hopefully people can just stay wherever the hell they are and work there and just meet up as, as is required. It could be filming or it might just be for once a month brainstorm. So I think times are completely changed. And, um, and just being from Belfast, life is just, is just different. People care about different things when they live in their region. And, and sometimes the conversation in London is just a bit too removed from a big region. And the life isn't the same. Um, and the way people spend their life and spend their time isn't the same. So... Um, so we have some, we have, uh, we can probably talk about, but we have a lot of, um, so, you know, Rap Game is shot in Birmingham. Um, you know, Drag Race, although it's shot in a studio bubble, all the contestants are like from Wales, from Scotland, from the north of England, they're panicking. Mm. So there's a lot of effort goes into that. Um, and I just think unless you see people who represent the kind of life that you have, the content's not going to be as, 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 it's not going to speak to you as much. So that's why, um, and interestingly, you just look like somebody like Stacey Dooley. Stacey's had a really long career um, and, you know, comes from Luton, obviously. And um, so that's ever, in a way, that's ever been thus, if you know what I mean. Or Gloria Hunniford on Morning TV. Like yeah. she's from Northern Ireland. So it's, uh, I just think it, it's, it's, um, it's really important but sometimes it can get lost in, in the mix because people say, oh, but it's easier to get the studio in here and there and the other. And actually just some, some push a bit more and go, no, we're filming it in Manchester. Uh, now, you've got a tough job and it's, it's a bit of a shit time, I think, for, for everyone at the moment. So I just wanted to ask you before we go to um, Q&A questions, uh, just your advice for dealing with a demanding career. And for anybody who's watching this at the moment, because it, it's normal and OK to feel a bit wobbly at the moment with everything going on. So what's your advice to people for just uh, m maintaining good self-care? Yeah, I think um, just in the whole of my career, this has been something that uh, I've had to learn to be better at. So, you know, when I worked on Panorama, I did a lot of war zone stuff. So I'd spend a lot of time in really tough environments like Afghanistan or Iraq. And I learned from those experiences, the importance of being aware of how you feel, sort of acknowledging how you feel. So if you feel shit, don't try and pretend you don't. And then talking about it, but also just things like exercise. So it's the obvious things like exercise, sleep, and sharing with your friends, building a small group of friends who are maybe all at the same stage of your 
job search or your career to share with each other when you've had a good day or a bad day so you're not just all keeping it to yourself but um really it's it's aware being aware of it and acknowledging it and then finding like you might be somebody who prefers to knit or somebody who prefers to walk or somebody who prefers to dance or sing or ex whatever it is find your thing that will help switch your mind because you're going to need to have developed the ability to know what those things are that will get you through when things get tough if that makes sense in the next decade this is all irrelevant to the company but just to get it in terms of a career and mm -hmm. I just want to say, I think I scanned the questions quickly. The purpose of BBC Three and what does it set out to do? Basically, BBC Three is there for that those key life stages when, in the 25 and under land. So it's a bit like the interest of the North say It's your first job. It's your first relationship, your first engagement, your first fuck up at work. And it's basically, we're there to try and help you find the way to be who you want to be and to support you through also fun and laughter and also insight through, you know, rap music insight or, you know, entrepreneurialism through Inches of the North insight. So we're trying to help that key life stage of 25 and under, which is why being around the UK is so important to show like Sammy Joe is an entrepreneur in the Northeast of England, very successful and does it with a heart. And we're trying to show you people so that you can be what you want to be because you're seeing that happen and how they do it on the screen. That's kind of that one. Mm, we're going to go to the Q&A now. Sorry, I've got a knock on the door halfway down. I don't know if you saw that. This is what happens when it's live. <laughs> so I'm at Radio 2 at the moment, and the plan was to do it in the, the studio where we do the breakfast show, but I got kicked out, so I'm in like a little cupboard. This is like a makeshift... It's, this is on the floor where BBC Six Music are, and literally you could barely swing a cat in here. I mean, there's like <laughs> an ironing board over there. This is an actual cupboard, the glamour behind the curtains. So you ready for the Q&A questions? I've not read these yes. yet, so I don't know... What they're going to be? You ready scan. for this? I've had a quick scan. Myself. Oh, okay, I've, I've I've got to press the. This is where I press the wrong thing, and we end up in somebody zooming wrong or well. Here we go. Um, so, has COVID nineteen impacted BBC Three Productions? Uh, that's from Matthew Pickett, uh, and Becky Slade as well said uh, tips for students to stand out when attempting to get work experience. So, I don't know if you want to maybe go on the, the the COVID question. Like everywhere being affected at the moment, how are you being affected? Oh. How are you being affected at BBC Three? Um, it sort of slowed production up because, you know, things got... So Angels of the North had to break production, for example, because the salon was shut. And then when salons were allowed to reopen, we, we restarted. So things have slowed down and Drag Race had to take a break. It's about to start. So it, it, we're, we're, we're still back in production, but it's all slowly pieces at a time rather than hell for leather, if that makes sense. But it, it's kind of, it's, it's all doable. It's, it's fine. Um, somebody's asked me, what's the best piece of advice you were ever given? That's a really good question. The one I always remember which I, and I have repeated it to people, is nobody's going to sort out your career for you. You have to take control of your own career journey, which always rings in my head. So I think that's probably the best piece of advice. Hello, am I back now? I told you I yes. pressed one button. I just disappeared off the face of the earth. Don't worry, I just was rambling on. <laughs> uh, what have we got here? Uh, so we've got what you've answered. What is the purpose of BBC Three? What it does? Uh, how important are screenwriters for BBC Three? Uh, one of the departments I'd like to get in is the drama department. That's from Julius. So maybe uh, for any screenwriters out there, uh, what, what's the route for that? How should they be getting your attention on that front? Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of people asking about ideas and getting things through. I would say, so <clears throat> you need to be aware of things like, there's, we do um, invitations to pitch like Sheffield, is the South Sheffield Documentary Festival. You might be a bit late for it because it's in a few weeks time, but next time on to the Sheffield Documentary Festival, we do a live pitch moment. We have a thing called the First Time Directors Scheme. If you Google BBC commissioning, the information and these will be on that. And you can, you can that's for first time directors. So there are entry things, if, which will all be on the BBC commissioning pages and under the genres. For scripted, they have the writer's room, which is the sort of best entry point for first time screenwriters. So again, go on the BBC commissioning pages and look for writer's room and you can apply um, for those. So 
you, there's, there's moments where you can apply to BBC schemes directly, which I would just do endlessly, because if you're not in, you can't win. And also do bring ideas to production companies, but be aware that you need to have researched that production company and you need to know what they make and you need to be able to talk to them in a knowledgeable way about their content. Because otherwise you, they'll be thinking, you know, you know, why are you wasting my time? You need to know what I'm a specialist in. Um, and, you know, if you have really amazing access or current affairs ideas, you can email me directly. I will not respond. I will have disseminate the emails amongst the team who will look at them and reply. Not within 24 hours, but we will. But um, that... Is, is a good thing to, is, is a good thing to do to be honest um, and somebody else has said how do you stand out in a time when you can't get work experience at the moment I would say it's things like have endless ideas mm. um, titles are really important so study titles in iPlayer and in Netflix so you always have a good I title for your idea um, and just start learning how to write very short one pages on your idea and just start sending them out um, those are, you know, eventually one will stick, but and it's a, it is a test of your own tenacity. And it's and if you're really good, you know, start your putting your own stuff on a YouTube channel. Um, I had met a guy recently, and he had been doing his own mini films on Instagram, and I mean, it's just so impressive when you see mm. you're like, oh, you're doing all that, wow. Um, and that's the kind of people that stick in your mind. Uh, Matthew's asked a good one. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given, Fiona Campbell? Oh, whenever you got interrupted, I answered that one. I've done that one. Oh, so that so that I, is basically you. On, no one's going to take charge of your career Zoom. except. Oh, there you go. I got kicked off the Zoom. Sorry about that. Um, well, the best way to what makes an impactful program we're looking for? Sorry, I'm so obsessed with the questions. I'm like, um, really good questions. Impactful program is, it's all about something that's going to drive conversation in that 25 and under group. And that means that it'll light up on our, our social channels because we do a lot, a lot of social listening. So for example, the Jessie Nestle film on, on trolling and her personal story mm. was really impactful. People were saying it should have been shown in schools. Um, it was really watched by the teen audience. It was BBC, It was the most successful BBC Three factual title ever. So it's when you find a subject and a voice on that subject that really drives people tweeting and chatting and sharing. That's when it works. Mm. I saw one, somebody said, and I think it's a good question actually. Um, how important is university now? I mean, I went through the university route I'm getting from that face, you're sort of near the hill or there. How, how do you see university? Because people do work really hard for three years to get themselves a degree. Go on, hit us with it. Yeah, so I would say if you do a degree, and there are, and I have met people who do some of the degrees where they teach you how to shoot, teach, like the Queen's University in Belfast, you can learn how to shoot, you can learn how yeah. to edit. Um, that, those are really good because you're learning really valuable skills and you should have a portfolio of work you can at least show people. Um, if you do a degree in a language, that's really good because you can always go off and you know work for CNN or uh, languages are always good. So that, yeah. you know, but to be honest, if you haven't got, we have loads of people on apprenticeship schemes working with BBC Three, and they're really amazing. So it's not the be all. It's it's whether only do a degree if you're passionate about what you're going to study. Don't just do it for the sake of it, because you should just be doing what you're passionate about because that will sell through everything. If that makes sense. And how, there's people saying, why can I get an entry job? <laughs> I love, that's it, direct questions. Um, again, because there's only 81 people on this Zoom, you can send me your CVs for work experience in Birmingham, BBC, and in London. However, nobody's in the office right now. So we can't really support that until we start to return to offices. But, you know, we, we have Ellie who manages all our, you know, team operations can have, you know, she regularly talks to people and lines them up when we get there. Um, so 
yeah, contact me, but be aware. There's nobody in the office at the moment. It's all a bit. Mm. And just out of interest, what are some of the entry level jobs for people who might not know? So, uh, as I said, we have a lot of people coming in on BBC, BBC apprenticeships. So, again, Google that because I think they are going to open those up again in next year at some point. Um, and then when the apprentices come in, they, they join mm. us and they work as researchers or sort of entry level social media managers or they start in the edit hub if they've got an interest or something they start editing short form or short form videos for social um and then they're involved in the development conversations about ideas um a few we've had recently have gone on to get jobs at itv or jobs in um bbc science radio so the apprenticeships are brilliant i have to say um so i'd recommend applying for those at, at any broadcaster Mm. Um, the, yeah. I imagine it's one of your job is to notice about getting work experiences. Being, yeah. yeah. I imagine it's your job as well. You're you're always learning new things as well because I just think BBC Three is so innovative and you have so many incredible people on screen and behind the scenes that for you as a controller, the, there must be days when you're coming in and you're like, Well, and you're taking new things on all the time. Yes, I am learning all the time. <clears throat> because if you think about social, so we're, we use those sort of um, third party platforms like you know your YouTube, your Twitter, now it's TikTok, to drive awareness of our content, which then makes people mm -hmm. want to come to iPlayer to watch it. And how those platforms evolve, so when I worked the reason I worked at Digital Director of BBC News is I was really interested in learning how all those platforms worked on like Apple News. And that, that really evolves over time. So like four years ago when I first started doing that, Facebook Live started and that was the thing. Woo, Facebook Live. You know, that all changes. Um, and so you have to learn how the platforms work and what's the best way you can use that to get to your ultimate goal, which for us is about saying, look, we've got this program on, um, on iPlayer. So that's why I did that digital news job. So again, if somebody offers you a job working in social media for Lidl or social media for the local garage, in fact, if somebody says to you, do you fancy running our social media for our local garage for the next few months? Because it's you can't get out, just bloody do it because you could demonstrate to me how you could get an audience to that garage, which could be really bloody interesting for me for a TV program. So don't, that's what I'm thinking about. Don't be snooty about content, me and my broken washing machines again. You know, mm. some, that's the kind of opportunity that will get you going, get you started. Mm. And what would you say to people? Because you mentioned, you know, people can get in touch with you and get ideas across. I think there can sometimes be that fine line because I, I feel like me personally, you've got to be persistent. You know, you're not going to get a yes straight away. So you've got to kind of hang in there. You've got to have a thick skin. Um, so wh where do you sit on that fine line between somebody's persistent and you get it and maybe when it's a bit, whoa, calm down a bit. Um, yeah. What's your advice for getting in touch with people and, and contacting people? Because I was always a bit mm. like, oh, it's been it's been two weeks. What do I do now? How do I, you know, so how, how do you feel about that kind of thing? That's a really good point. So my email address, because somebody's asking it, is, and I remember I won't answer them all directly. We'll divvy them up over a period of time. So don't, in case it's a tsunami, it's fiona.campbell at bbc.co.uk. So very easy to remember. My advice is, um, you know, send it, um, and send it so it doesn't look like a blanket one. Sometimes I get blanket ones that have obviously gone to 10 people and I'm like, nobody's going to answer that. Send it. It's good. You can follow up about two weeks later because I think a week is, is not enough time because we're all getting too many emails now. You can follow up two weeks later. Very often I reply with just one sentence just in, in the vein of a reply is better than no reply even if my reply is really short and there's spelling mistakes in it. And then you can always email somebody, I reckon every two months, every six to eight weeks, if you're chasing somebody at an indie, um, you will soon know if you're becoming annoying because they'll send you an abrupt email, which I don't think people, you know, 
so you just got to, but you just got to keep going through that um, because eventually something will, will stick and you need to track a few people. So if, if there's a, if, if, you know, there's a, a film you really love, you just need to follow a director and keep saying, oh, I've seen your latest one. Oh, I've seen your latest one. You know, if I could ever help you restart, you just got to think your way through who are the people in the industry you'd actually like to work with in terms of independent companies or executive producers. Um, and if you've got good ideas in your email, always have ideas in the email. Emails with no ideas do not get answered. That's a really important thing. And titles are a key. And, and yeah, how, somebody said sorry, about Karen. Netflix, you know, if Netflix offer you a job, go and work for Netflix. I mean, somebody from our team left our social media team and has just gone to Netflix social media team. So, you know, if you, if you can do that, do that. And how are you finding it at the moment, sort of running BBC Three from home? Because I know that's uh, something that a lot of uh, bosses throughout the BBC are doing at the moment. But for you personally, how, what, what challenges does that present? Um, it's, it's a bit weird. Um, we just Zoom a lot and chat a lot. But the good thing is you get to chat also to talent. So talent aren't just, that's, by that I mean presenters or potential presenters who are high profile people who are possibly not as busy as they normally are. So they actually have time to think about talking to you. And that's really interesting because you get real insight from them as to what's, what's going on in their world. Um, and you have a lot of time to think and try and hone your, your strategy instead of it just being endless noise. So it's, 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 a, bit, it's a bit intense because you're on Zoom the whole time. Then that comes back to that thing, being aware when you're tired and then I go out and go spinning or something to kind of clear my head because it's all a bit intense. <laughs> Yes. Oh, well, Fiona, um, thank you so much. For as today. I said, what could, there's somebody here saying, what can I do to get more experience? Think, think about volunteering for anybody that you could do, uh, grow their social media channels for anybody. Just that's the best thing in these immediate times. And exactly, somebody here says, I've built my personal Twitter. That's a good idea. Build your personal Twitter if, th if that suits you. So I could talk forever seeing all these questions. No, no, go for I was about to say, um, if there's anything you want to add, like AOB at the end of a meeting. Yeah, I'm just going to look. Um, yeah, key attributes in a BBC Three employee. Loads of ideas, as you say, Richie, persistence. Um, you've got to remain positive because it's very easy, which is not easy, but mm. it's very easy to get down. So you've got to be, you've got to keep picking. If you're going to have a long career, you've got to keep picking yourself up and going um if you know if you have an idea you do need to have sussed out a bit of access because you know if you haven't got the beginnings of access or haven't tried to contact them what you know what's the um what's the point so i'm racing down these questions a bit um i give you my somebody's yeah lena in the questions you've got my email address right uh da, da, da. Um, the linear thing, we'll wait and see. Who knows? We'll wait and see whether the big boss puts it back on linear or not. It's brilliant being repeatedly on BBC One, which rap game is going to be. I'll repeat my email address, fiona.campbell at bbc.co.uk. Major influencers, um, you know, look, look at um, myself, as I, look at all the main presenters on BBC Three shows and look at what they do on YouTube and Instagram. That you'll, that'll teach you a lot in itself. Um, da, 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 da. I think that's probably, we've done quite a lot whizzing through all of those. I think we've done quite well there. Hope you did all, fabulous. Got your questions well, answered. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been lovely speaking to you, Fiona, because uh, we know you're very busy and no, you could have gone... Yeah. it's been so lovely to speak to you and i know everybody who's logged in really appreciates appreciates it too i want to say a big thank you as well to the university of worcester school of arts and the royal television society in the midlands i hope everybody enjoyed that session uh, both fiona and i are on twitter so don't forget to follow add and use the hashtag make sure you use the hashtag as well uh, and say how wonderful it's been and that this has been your favorite session of the week so far not that we want to uh 
influential decision, but you better do it. Uh, and if you want to find out any more, uh, yeah, keep going. Go the RTS keep website. Going. <laughs> yeah, keep going. The RTS website, rts.org.uk. Fiona, thank you so much. And thank you to everybody for watching. <laughs>